after about the first week, um, the government, the USA government, had announced that they were going to break down the, bar the barricades of Wounded Knee and arrest everybody. And Roman Robidoux, who was the only Native American lawyer in South Dakota at that time, put, called um, the National Lawyer, Lawyers Guild offices around the country to see if they could get some help because he realized if they arrested a huge number of people, just the simple processing would be very time consuming. Now, I was a young, I was a very young lawyer at that time, but I knew I could process people, I could do what I could do. And so a fellow um, radical lawyer and I drove up from Denver. And so I stayed the rest of the 71 days and was very pleased to do so. I divided my time somewhat between Rapid City and Wounded Knee because we had a lot of young, a lot of lawyers began to offer to volunteer to help. And it's very hard to know how to actually make good use of somebody who can come in for only a week or only two, only two weeks. One of the early successes we had as lawyers was when the government tried to stop food from coming into Wounded Knee. A couple of us who interviewed a bunch of the people figured out that yes, that was happening. There were, there were people in the churches in Rapid City gathering large quantities of food and wanting to send food in. So we brought a lawsuit because there's no legal basis upon which you can block food coming into a place. When they came into town, they kept trying to limit the participants to the AIM members. And the AIM members, to their deep credit, refused to have, allow the government to, sep to set out the, separate out the women, to keep them, the local people, in the background. Because the movement had all begun as a local movement. And the women leaders were very important. And AIM immediately knew that, respected it, and forced that recognition upon the government.